Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, I was supposed to be at a storytelling event in Barrington tonight where the theme of the evening was travel stories, but then they decided they weren't going to use people who'd been in the event last year, so I got bumped. But in the meantime, I'd already written the story, so I appreciate you guys giving me a chance to air it out here tonight. Uh, thanks. It's, it's a cautionary tale. I call it the challenge. I did stand-up comedy for 30 years in a variety of venues all around the country, and while the shows were generally enjoyable, getting there was the working part of the job, especially when I had to travel with somebody else. All travel companions are not created equal, and if you're going to be sharing a long car ride with somebody, you better make sure you're compatible. Through trial and error, I have managed to find very few people that I can stand to be confined with for an extended period of time. And one of those people is my friend Mike Toomey. Uh, you might be familiar with him from the WGN Morning News. Mike is a brilliant and gifted comedian. He's also a genuinely decent and respectable man, for the most part. <laughs> I'm not saying he's perfect. He's just really weird in roughly the same fashion that I'm really weird. <laughs> I've heard it said that men never really grow up. They just become older versions of little boys. And I've generally found that to be true. Comedians in particular seem to suffer from Peter Pan syndrome. Or rather, they enjoy Peter Pan syndrome. It's the people around them that suffer from it. <laughs> and Mike is no exception. Mike and I were booked to uh, do a Friday night show at a casino in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan a few years ago. Brimley, Michigan, to be precise. It's a decent paycheck and a fun gig once you get there. But getting there involves a seven-hour car ride. So we decided to leave a day early in order to have some time to rest before we had to do the show. Mike said he would drive. He said he'd pick me up Thursday around 5. We could drive through the night and arrive at the casino around midnight. Works for me. I'm a night owl by nature. That doesn't pose any sort of a problem. But when he picked me up that day, I was completely unprepared for the journey into darkness I was about to take. I put my suitcase in the back, and as I settled into the passenger seat, Mike turned to me and said in a deadly serious tone, are you ready for the challenge? Thinking he meant the drive itself, I said, yeah, sure, let's go. But he said, no, I mean, are you ready for the challenge? The Barry Manilow challenge. I said, what the hell is that? He said, we're gonna listen to Barry Manilow the whole way up there. I said, Mike, it's a seven hour drive. He said, that's right. Yeah. And I could see that in some bizarre fashion, my manhood was on the line and my strength of character was being called into question. So I said, yeah, I'm up for the challenge. Let's do this. In the back of my mind, I was thinking, he doesn't have seven hours worth of Barry Manilow and he's going to get tired of this long before I ever do. Well, I was wrong. <laughs> Very wrong. I didn't know Barry Manilow had so many albums. I didn't know there were six live albums. I didn't know there were three Christmas albums. I didn't know there was an album of American classics. I didn't know there was an album of Broadway standards. I didn't know there was alternate versions and outtakes. And I didn't know Mike Toomey had all of it. <laughs> now, for the record, I don't dislike Barry Manilow. It's just not what I normally listen to. My, my tastes tend to run more towards rock and roll, you know. Guitars, drums, testosterone, that sort of thing. But I sat there and I took it like a man with Mike Toomey providing backstory the entire time. <laughs> did you know Barry wrote many popular commercial jingles before becoming successful? Well, he did. Did you know he also wrote the theme song to American Bandstand? Well, he did. Have you ever listened to the storyline and analyzed the intricate plot twists of Copacabana? Well, we did. <laughs> About five hours into the drive, we stopped for gas somewhere, somewhere in northern Wisconsin. And as I purchased a cup of coffee, I poured out my tale of woe to the young lady behind the counter, thinking I would at least find a sympathetic ear for what I was being made to endure. But as I finished up telling her my story, she just smiled and pointed to her name tag. And I swear to God, I am not making this up. Her name was Mandy. Yeah. And yeah, her parents did name her after the song. 
I was stunned, but Mike took it as confirmation from the universe that this challenge was meant to be and his musical preferences were being sanctioned by the gods. So we got back in the car and finished up the drive. And as we pulled into the casino parking lot a couple hours later, I croaked out a little half-hearted, off-key version of, looks like we made it. <laughs> The rest of the weekend was a blast. The show went really well. We enjoyed the buffet at the casino. And when we drove home, we listened to a variety of different things. And Mike and I are still friends to this day. But that trip changed me. I, I think I picked up a little touch of PTBMD. That's post-traumatic Barry Manilow disorder. <laughs> you know, they say what doesn't kill you only makes you stronger. But in some cases, I think it just makes you a little weirder. Be careful who you get into a car with, kids. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>